Good morning, sixth graders. I hope you are doing well today. <clears throat> um, we have two more days until spring break. Yay. So we have today and Friday, and then we are done for a whole week, and I'm really excited about that too, um, just for everybody to have a break. This has all been a huge learning experience, um, moving to distance learning. Okay, so let's talk about your agenda today. <clears throat> so you have math with me right now, yay. And then um, I also added in some extra practice problems through Khan Academy. Um, so those are just optional, you don't have to do them, but if you really need some more help or just for fun, doing those extra problems, okay? On um, negative and positive integers. And then reach is today. So um, groups one and two will be meeting with me today. Your worksheets are already in Canvas underneath the REACH module. So print those out and then come see me at 12 today. And then you have ST Math, of course. And if you are in groups um, three, four, and five, you're working on iReady, please make sure you're doing another lesson. I know iReady was down on Wednesday for a bit. Um, so we'll have to, hopefully it'll be back up today. Um, and then you have, it's a, a really short science um, assignment. So I want you to be thinking about the correlation between the respiratory system and the coronavirus. And some of you have already answered that in the assignment that was on Wednesday. And um, the, a lot of, a, a big portion of this is the coronavirus is a respiratory virus. So it's affecting your respiratory system, the way you breathe. and it, and um, a lot of people are actually getting pneumonia because of the coronavirus. And then the pneumonia is an infection and where some people have to be hospitalized, some people are able to work at it at home depending on how bad it is. <clears throat> but um, I want us to really be thinking about that because the coronavirus is a huge issue right now and it's on all of our brains. So I uploaded a video for you um, that talks a little bit about the correlation between the respiratory system and the coronavirus. And then it also talks about how the coronavirus spreads so easily and where they got their information from. Because before we left um, to do distance learning, we had talked about doing a project on the coronavirus and looking at the data. And um, so this is just kind of like a little um, step into that. Because um, obviously we don't have time. We're about to go on to our spring break. So I don't want us to start a project just yet. Um, but just something to be thinking about for a possibility when we come back from break. Um, so that's just a, a fun video. You actually don't have to turn anything in. I just want you to be thinking about how this affects, how the coronavirus affects our respiratory system and why um, there is this huge pandemic right now. Um, our respiratory system is a very important system and I'm actually really happy that that's what we've been talking about the last two weeks, um, especially because it has a huge effect on us right now. It's a, a real world life issue right now. So I'm, I'm hoping you guys can see that connection. Um, and that's it, that's all you have today. So not too much. If you're doing the math with the video with me, then that will take up your time for math. So that's great. You guys do have a quiz tomorrow on um, negative and positive integers. And that quiz will be in Canvas, just like our other quizzes have been the last two weeks. So um, anyways, that's it. Okay, so you're gonna need your instruction book with me right now. And we're gonna do page 120, 121. You do not have any practice book pages to do today. It's just these two pages, which you'll do with me in this video. And then there's extra practice problems through Khan Academy, which is optional. And that link is in your checklist. Okay, so we're on page 120 in our instruction book. That is the white orange book. The white that fades to orange. Let's look at number 14. Number 14 says, what number is the opposite of the opposite of five? What can you say about the opposite of the opposite of a number? Okay, so I'm gonna do um, a number line right here for you, okay? So if I have a number line here, and my origin, of course, is zero. Okay, that's my place uh, placeholder. It has no value. It's just where everything starts. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. 
So we know that to the right of the zero are all of my positive numbers. So one, two, three, four, five. And then to the left of my zero are all my negative numbers. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. That goes for that one, okay? <clears throat> so if we're looking at the number five, okay? So here's the number five. I'm gonna put a big dot right here. What is the opposite of five? Yeah, negative five, absolutely. So um, for five, the opposite would be negative five. <clears throat> but now it's asking, what's the opposite of the opposite? So if this is the opposite, what's gonna be the opposite of this? Yeah, five again. So the opposite of the opposite is actually right back where we started, which is five. Because if you think about it, we start at five, the opposite is negative five, the opposite of that is five, okay? <laughs> um, the opposite of the opposite. Okay, so um, it gives us a couple lines to go ahead and explain that, and it says, what can you say about the opposite of the opposite of a number? So I'm just gonna write this down on words, okay? So the opposite of five, is negative five, okay? Then the opposite of negative five is five, okay? So that means that the opposite of the opposite of five is five. The opposite of the opposite is five. Because the opposite of the opposite is five. Ooh, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means that the opposite of the opposite of a number is always gonna be the number that you start with, okay? So um, this means the opposite of the opposite of a number, whoops, that's an M. is what you start with. Okay, I know that was rather lengthy. The opposite of five is negative five. The opposite of negative five is five. The opposite of the opposite is five. This means the opposite of the opposite of a number, oop, I forgot my R, is what you start with, okay? All right, that was a lot. <laughs> okay, number um, 15. Positive and negative numbers can show an amount above or below zero. They can also be used to show an amount above or below a certain point. So zero does not have to be our point of origin. It could be another number. So um, let's read the scenario that they give us and then I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Students at Taft Middle School have a goal of collecting 1,000 pounds of recycling materials each month. The following table shows their results over a six month period. Complete the table, the first month is done for you. Okay, so for this particular problem, our point of origin is gonna be 1,000 because that's what their goal was to collect. So anything less than 1,000 is gonna be negative and anything more than a thousand is gonna be positive. So um, I'm gonna erase this, and if you didn't finish copying this down, just pause the video so that you can. And I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna create a new um, number line. 
but this time I'm going to do a vertical number line because I, I want you guys to make sure that you know that our number lines can be either horizontal or vertical. And we said this um, on Tuesday that a vertical number line represents the y-axis and the horizontal number line represents the x-axis and which is what you need to graph coordinates, okay? So um, the number line that we had just done was a horizontal one that would represent the x-axis. So now I'm gonna do one this way and my point of origin is gonna be 1000. Okay, and then that means anything above or below, anything above would be positive, anything below would be negative. So that means if this was like 1,010, I'm gonna do it by 10 increments. 1,020, 1,030, and then anything below um, would be our negative. So I'm gonna put positive right here, and then this over here is gonna be negative. So um, as I said, I'm going by um, 10 increments, so this would be 990, and then 980, and then 970, and 960, and 950. Okay? So um, I'm actually going to make this one a little bit bigger so that we know that this is our, our point of origin. This, the 1,000 is representing our zero right now. Okay, now let's go to our table and let's look at that. So January, they collected 985 pounds of recycling. So 985 would be right in here. So I'm gonna do this with my red real quick. So um, 985 is in my negative zone. Um, and so this would be like right here. 985 okay and so this is in my negative zone but how much uh, how far is it from the thousand so just like on our other number line we counted the spaces um, or counted the hash marks of how many spaces that was um, past the zero so how where is 95 from a thousand so we know that this is 10 and this would be 20, but it's not all the way to 20. So we would say this is 15. So 985 is not only negative, but it's negative 15. And they actually give us that one, but I wanted you to see where that comes from. Okay, for February, it says 1010. So if we look on our number line here, 1,010 is right here, and it's in the positive zone. So how, how far is it from our origin? How far is it from 1,000? It's 10, yeah. So for that one, it would either be plus 10 or minus 10. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one says 995. All right, 995 is not all the way here to 990. It would actually be right here in the middle. So 995. And it's in our negative zone because it's below 1,000. So that means for sure our answer is going to have a negative in it. But how far away is it from 1,000? Yeah, it's 5. So we'll put the answer as negative 5 for that one. Okay, the next one is 1,050, 1,050. So that's gonna be on my positive, and I don't have it on my number line, so I'm just gonna put it right here, 1,050. Okay, so we already know it's gonna be positive. And so how far away is it from our origin, from 1,000? Yeah, it's 50, 50 spaces away. So our answer would be positive 50. Okay, the next one for May is 975. 975. So 970 is in my negative, so that answer is going to be a negative. And then how far away is 975, which is right here, how far away is that from our origin, from our 1,000? How many spaces? Yeah, 25, so it'd be negative 25. 
Okay, and then our last one for June was 980. So 980 is right here. It's in our negative zone. And then how many spaces is it from 1,000, from our origin? Yeah, 20. So the answer is negative 20. All right, <clears throat> now let's look at number 16. Number 16 says, look at the number line below, letters A, B, C, and D all represent integers. Okay, I'm gonna do that number line right here on the bottom. So this is a horizontal um, number line, which means it represents the x-axis. So I'm gonna put that right here. And we have a zero for our point of origin. And then we have a B on this side, a C on this side, an A way over here, and a D way over here. Okay, let's go ahead and answer these questions. Part A, which letters represent negative numbers? So if this is our point of origin and what we learned about positive and negative numbers, we learned positive is to the right of our zero, and negative is to the left of our zero. So which letters represent our negatives? Yeah, A and C. So for part A, well, let me do this in a different color so that maybe it'll be easier to see. Okay, part A is um, A and C. Okay, part B, which letters represent positive integers? So if A and C represent a negative, that must mean B and D represent positive. So for letter B, the answer is B and D. And then part C, if B and C are the same distance from zero, can you describe them? So B and C are the same distance from zero. So even though we don't know what the number is, what can we say about those two integers? And it's about what we learned yesterday. We have a specific word that we would call them that starts with an O. Opposites. Yeah, so C and B are opposite of each other because they're the same distance from zero. One is positive, one is negative, so they must be opposites of each other. Okay, so part C is the word opposites. Okay, number 17. <clears throat> this one, um, for number 17 and these parts, you can um, come up with your own scenario and do this on your own, or you can use the scenario that I'm about to use, okay? And I'm actually going to erase what I have on the board, so if you don't have this or you need it still, make sure you pause the video. Okay, it says, um, write a problem about a real life situation involving temperature or money. The situation should include a number and its opposite that results in an answer of zero. So I'm actually going to come up with a scenario, but I want to do my scenario on temperature, okay? So I'm actually gonna create a number line, um, but I'm gonna create it vertically because a thermometer would have it vertically. So I'm gonna do that right here. So here's my zero, and then, and I'm gonna count by tens. So these are all my negatives because it's below my zero. And these are all my positives. Let me go one more down here since I went to 50. Okay, excellent. Okay, so this is gonna represent um, degrees because I just talked about that I wanna do it on temperature, okay? All right, part A says to write your problem. So let's say, um, let's say our problem is it's six o'clock in the morning and it is negative five degrees. So it's six o'clock in the morning and it's negative, um, actually I'm gonna say negative 10 because we have that here. So it's negative 10 degrees. So 
This is at 6 a.m., okay? And then um, at 11 a.m., the temperature went up by 15 degrees, okay? By 11 a.m., the temperature went up 15 degrees. So what was the temperature at 11 a.m.? That's, that's the problem I'm coming up with. So we're gonna write this out now because part A says to write our problem. So I'm gonna put uh, A here, and A says um, at six o'clock a.m., the temperature is negative 10 degrees, okay? By 11 o'clock a.m., the temperature went up 15 degrees. So my question is, what is the temperature at 11 a.m.? So what is the temperature at 11 a.m. Oh, that's a question mark, because that's a question. <clears throat> okay, so part A we have, we have our question, we have the setup for our question, our setup gives us all the information, and then now we have to actually answer the question. So it says, graph the numbers you used in your problem on a number line. So as you guys can see, I did a vertical number line and the number line they give you in the book is horizontal. So if you want to, you can turn this into a horizontal number line or just create your own on the side of the page. So we're counting by um, tens. We have our negatives below and if I had you if I want to use the horizontal ones I would just make sure all of these negative numbers go to the left of our origin and our origin is zero and then these would all numbers would be on the right if we want to use our horizontal one okay it says graph the numbers you used in your problem on a number line so here we go here's our problem that's already done for us part B okay so this is part B Okay, so part C, explain what zero means in this situation. Okay, so what is zero? What's zero in this situation? It's our point of origin, right? Yeah. So um, for this is for letter C, zero is our point of origin. It is um, it is not positive and it's not negative. So it is not positive or negative. Yeah, it's neutral. Okay. Okay, so now let's actually solve the problem. So what, what is the temperature at 11 a.m.? So we're starting here at 10 and we're gonna go up 15 degrees. So that's 10, five, so our answer would be right here at five, whoops, five degrees at 11 a.m. So the answer, um, so let's just put this for D. So, I'm um, sorry, um, negative 10 plus 15 degrees is going to equal a positive five degrees. And what we just did is we added integers. So positive and negative numbers. It's easy to add two positive numbers, but it's not as easy to add negative to positive numbers. And that's why we show you the number line, because you can use the number line to add and subtract and see where is it going on the number line, okay? Um, part D actually talks about a different scenario which I want to bring up to you right now. Um, so let's say that um, on our number line 
at 6 a.m. it was actually at negative 5 degrees. Okay, so I'm actually going to write that here. So let's say it was at negative 5 degrees. And then let's say by 11 a.m. it went up 5 degrees. So we add 5 degrees. And what does that equal? Zero, yeah. So it ended up at zero degrees, okay? And so what can you say about the sum of a number and its opposite? So if you add your number, your opposite number to your number, to your integer, you're gonna get zero no matter what it is. So let's say it was negative 10 degrees plus 10. So I'm adding my opposites. What am I gonna get? Zero, yeah. Yep, and now let's go the other way. Let's say you have um, 10 degrees and we subtract negative 10. What do you get? I'm sorry, not subtract add negative 10 because you're going to be here at 10 degrees and then you're going to get go down to um, go down because your sub, uh, negative 10 is the same thing as subtracting 10 and you're still going to get zero but adding and subtracting integers is actually a um, seventh grade standard so we actually won't be going too much into that Okay, um, I think that's all I have for you. I'm sorry if I confused you on that last part. Just make sure you know that if you start with a negative and you add the positive opposite, you're gonna get zero. And that best example is add five, we get to zero. Okay, so I apologize if I confused you. That's it though. Um, of course, if you have any questions, please see me at uh, my office hours. And um, I'm seeing group one and two for REACH today. Please make sure you print out your worksheet and come see me. And then you have that video for science, but you don't have to turn anything in for it. I just think it's pretty cool to watch and just see the correlation between the respiratory system and the coronavirus. And ST math, and I ready math for groups three, four, and five. All right, so I'll be seeing you guys later today. Bye.